Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome back, family. Good evening, good evening. Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Jasmine, green tea, and ginger. Nice combination. Mm. That jasmine, man, that jasmine is so good. How's everybody feeling today? Did you read the uh, subject line for today, the title for today? Anybody take a look at it? I figured it would be appropriate for today to, to um, share To share some exercises dealing with, uh, yeah, clearing the long channels, the long channels. Talking about the meridian system. Remember, Tai Chi is traditional Chinese medicine. Well, anyone that has not seen the title for today, it is, um, don't quote me, but it is in regards to clearing the long channels, talking about the meridian system, um, and some meditative flow. So, uh, I actually wanted to ask a question today and you know the longs are dealing with the color white so I said I'll wear all white today the breath the longs is associated with the color white even when you eat foods white foods like onions you know stay away from the breads the fake pasteurized uh, milk those things create mucus excessive mucus blocks the electrical signals inside of our bodies and leads to disease 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 too much mucus causes a lack of communication inside of our body the energetic field is blocked the organs are not able to communicate too much mucus, too much dampness. The processed cheese. The pasta. The good stuff. Good tasting stuff. Good to see the family here. Brother Tristan, thank you. Pam is here. The Lung Meridian, absolutely. Vivian. Jen is back. Gary. Everybody's doing good. So, hey, while we get, it's six after already. Let's go ahead. I want to ask a question starting out with this live stream. What is, and this is only your idea. There's no right or wrong. We all have our own experiences and what things mean to us. I just like to share and I learn from actually getting feedback from everyone. So, and I'm assuming that everyone else does as well. It can kind of spark some ideas, help us to research and question things. And it's a great way to, to learn and to share with each other. Welcome, Soul Group. Brother Marky is here as well. I wanted to start out by asking, what is, what is wellness? Make it simple to you. And then I'll share with you what my idea of wellness is. Yeah, just ty type it in the chat. What is wellness to you? And we're all different. It doesn't have to mean the same thing. Some things may be uh, very close in understanding to us and some may not. 
What is well wellness? Greetings, greetings to the fam. Go ahead and type it in the chat. What is wellness? Sister Pam is here. She says the Long Meridian talking about uh, today's topic, one of today's topics. We'll share a um, couple of exercises that I've definitely already shared with you, and we may have something that I have not shared as well. Megan, thank you. Megan is here. Thank you for the wonderful um, Tai Chi 360 photo that you shared today with me. I have no idea how to share that on my personal page now. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, post it on your page and tag me in it or something. I know you sent me a private message, Megan. Corinthia, welcome to the welcome to the chat family. Welcome to the live stream. Thank you for being here. Yuri, we've got a lot of people in here today, new faces as well. We should go ahead and take flight. The prophet is here, brother Ken, happy to see you, my brother. Karen is here. This is good, everybody, Bill is here, everybody is ready to do some movement. This is good. So wellness being focused on keeping your body and mind clear through through eating proper foods and exercise. That's what um, my good sister Pam says. Thank you, Megan, if you will do that. Gary says, lack of dis, dis ease, dis ease. I like to break it down into being not at ease. See the D-I-S, dis ease. That's all it means, not at ease. Mental lack of dis ease. For me, that is sound mind, body, and purified spirit. Yes, all of those things, much, much more. Health, lack of disease, live spirit. I'm, yeah, you've someone mentioned the spirit. Wellness to me means good health, body, mind, and spirit. We're all on the right path. Peace inside and out. Bill. <laughs> Bill, you're thinking along the lines of myself. Physical, mental, and spiritual health, Brother Ken says. This is good. A lot of feedback. So to me, I'll tell you how I look at it. To me, it is simply having healthy, healthy relationships. Healthy relationships with our environment. Brother Colon is here. We're talking about what is wellness, my brother. You may read some things in the chat. So to me, as I just said it, wellness is having good positive relationships with our environment environment is anything outside and inside of ourselves. everything is included everything that we we come in contact with is a relationship it doesn't have to be a person to person we have a relationship with the food that goes into our mouths we have a relationship with the sunshine with the ground below our feet every single thing that we come in contact with establishes a relationship. It's, it's either har harmony or disharmony. That's it. But to have wellness, we must have harmony inside and outside. Inside is food, smell, sight, everything. Things we touch, everything we deal with. Everything that we deals with, deal with. So what's so unique about this, this, this meditation and motion that we, that we all um, participate in? The movement helps us remove and establish good relationships, you know, help remove anything, any dis-ease, right? Stiffness, ailment. And then also we talked about the mind, having a healthy mind, you know, healthy thoughts. You know, we talk about the meditation practice. You know, what is meditation? You know, we could talk about that, but we're not going to do it today. We could talk about that. And, and, and man, I'm sure, I'm sure we would um, bring some new thoughts to everybody's mind. I'll say this and we'll get started. We, remember, we talk about the monkey mind, right? So think about this. I just talked about wellness, wellness being 
having good, positive relationships, right? With everything, with our a total environment. So how can we have a good, positive relationship with the monkey mind? You ever thought about that? How can we have a good, positive relationship with the monkey mind? Am I going to try to contain the monkey and take him out of his natural habitat and try to change him into being something that he's not? That's not a good, positive relationship at all. I'll say this and then we'll get started. So instead of trying, trying to control the monkey mind, we learn to let the monkey be a monkey. You get that? We learn to let the monkey be himself. Go ahead, monkey, be a monkey. Right? Just as long as he's entertaining the proper thoughts, I have no problem with him being a monkey. And we'll talk about that in great detail. Because to me, meditation, okay, it's a way to relax or whatever. Some people say that meditation is not thinking. But to me, meditation teaches us how to think. Meditation teaches us how to think, the proper way to think. So I have no problem with the monkey jumping around, working on those things that I'm working on because my thoughts are nice and pure. You get what I'm saying? Go ahead and entertain those thoughts. They're all good, monkey. Be a monkey. But at the same time, I don't let those thoughts become a distraction. Let's go ahead and bow in. I don't want to take you too far out and get you to start thinking right now. Yeah, don't fight the monkey. Befriend it. So I don't want to get you to think too much right now. Let's get it started. Actually, instead of reading anything today, let's go ahead and jump in and do some work today. Let's do some work. We've got about 45 minutes. That way I don't be looking up and saying, oh, wow, the class is over. So I'm going to hold out on this today. I think we just talked about enough. Let's talk a little bit um, about the lungs before we get started because this, these couple exercises are going to deal with the lung meridian, right? So first of all, let's identify where the meridian is and let's make sure we're all clear on what a meridian is, right? A meridian. Some people may not know, so let's make sure that we kind of have a general understanding. So if you think about our anatomy, right, our physical anatomy, we have uh, blood vessels, you know, veins, arteries, right? We also have um, nerves, right? And if you think about those things, they, they encompass our entire being, you know, our whole body. Even on the, on the skin surface level, we have capillaries, right? Very small vessels that transport blood, oxygen, nutrients, and also help detoxify the body, right? So if you think of a meridian, a meridian is very similar to that type of idea. The one thing that's unique about meridians is they aren't tangible, they're intangible. Unlike a vein, you can actually dissect, you know, dissect our anatomy and identify a vein and a nerve. You can say that is a nerve, this is an whatever. You can't do that with meridians. They're, they're, they're there, but they're invisible to our eyes. They may be there, even in a physical way, but these eyes only see a very small portion of the visible light spectrum. Most people don't realize that. There's a vast amount of stuff here that we can't see. Or here. It's very loud out here. We just can't hear it. We just can't hear it. Um... The meridian that we're talking about, now remember this, it's not imaginary, it's just invisible to us. It is there, all right? Acupuncture lines, they put acupuncture needles in there, right? So this particular line that we're talking about now, the meridian line, it is associated with our lungs, right? The lungs. A little bonus in there. So we have, we have, uh, 
and a lot you know lungs on both sides of our body right most people don't know that on the left side we only have two lobes we have two lobes on the left and on the right side we actually have three lobes look that up you need to know your anatomy we all do it makes us know ourselves better and help us feel the way that our body functions better right so this meridian line it runs along the nail side inside of we call this the yin side the inside the soft side is the yin side of the arm soft this will be the yang side the outside the outside of the body this will be the yin side of my body the inside of my legs will be yin like y i n yang just like that sign back there yin yang the tai chi sign our body has the same relationships and organization. So along the yin side, coming from the thin, I mean the thumb point, coming along here, right? Now once you get up to the bicep, once you get up to the bicep, it stays on the outside of the bicep. It doesn't come on the in inside of the bicep. It goes along the outside of the bicep. It comes right into the soft palate, right there. There's an indentation right there. That's the line for the, um, the lung meridian. Okay? So whenever we do any type of exercise where our arms are extended up, you know, the long and short hand, you know, all of these things with our arms, when we physically raise our arms, we open the channels more inside of this lung channel opens more also as we raise our arms our lung actually lifts up as well it lifts up right and it, that allows it to dangle more or to hang more to hang freely more because you know the organs are kind of like touching each other in there because we walk on two feet we're erect we're not like a, a four-legged animal where their organs are hanging down they get a much better um connection with gravity because their their organs are hanging down our organs are not really hanging down they're kind of like on top of each other you get what I'm saying so the better we can hold our posture and not slouch when we slouch all the inside is starting to accumulate on top of each other it's just piling on, on top of each other no blood flow when that happens we want to elongate our body then the organs can hang down the lungs can dangle the intestines can dangle, the liver, everything can dangle, and it, that just help generate more openness, more blood flow, more detoxification, more nutrients. You get what I'm saying? Simple science. It doesn't take a rocket science, scientist, right? So we're going to do an exercise today, and some of you already done it before. Specifically, I want to go back over this one and I want you to bring it into your life. I want you to do it often because it is very important. They call the lungs, the lungs are actually the emperor of the body. The lungs are because they oversee the oxygen is coming in. The oxygen is our number one important resource. So the lungs have a very big job, you know, they're also tied into the uh, water system, right? And to, with our bladder, you know, help with the water, the kidneys. So we got to take care of the lungs. We're going to do sword fingers. Also, the lungs are associated with what emotion? Anybody know? Take a shot. What emotion is the lungs associated with? Let me know. Somebody knows. Oh yeah, this this is this is this a good one, family. We all need this. Yeah, brother Sparky, come back and check it out. We're gonna do some sword fingers later. Grief, the empirical lungs. There you go. So the lungs are associated with grief. I say a lot of people are grieving right now. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree that a lot of people are grieving right now in these days and times? And this is why I keep saying 
There's a, there has never been a better time and opportunity for Tai Chi to really help the entire planet. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, Deanna, grief, the empirical lungs. So we're gonna make a hand gesture. And, and so group, you know this exercise, this first one. And we're gonna work our way into it, but first we're gonna clear the channel. I'm gonna walk you through a little clearing, a clearing procedure, how to, how to clear the channel. And then we're going to tonify and strengthen the channel with sore fingers and with the breath to tonify and strengthen. But first we'll clear it. It's an energetic clearing that we'll do. Let's bow in and do that. Sore fingers, you're gonna, be, you're gonna make your fingers like this, so just so you'll know when we start doing the exercise. This is not like, uh, no strength. Everything is soft that we do here, okay? Remember the channel that we're working with. Feel that, feel that, feel that indentation right in there where the shoulder comes right into the chest. I want you to feel that on yourself so you know where it's at. You can feel that soft spot right in there. Right, be familiar with that because when I talk about opening the shoulder, that's what I'm talking about, opening that space right there. Right there. Let's do it, fam. Let's bow in. Let's give thanks. Let's give thanks. Let's give thanks. We all have something to be thankful of. Whatever it is, go ahead and, and focus on that. Focus on whatever it may be that you're thankful of right now. And let's give an honest, sincere thank you. Honest, sincere thank you. Heartfelt thank you. Deep inside, reach inside. Whatever it may be, special to you. All right, let's go. Let's take flight, family. Let's go. Here we go. Give thanks. Make it special. Cleanse the inside of your body here with all of that energy that you collected from the universe right here. Wash your organs now. Let's go ahead and start detoxifying the body. Start detoxifying the body here. Washing it. Scanning the body. Your hands are your scanners. Scan your body. Scan inside. Wash it. Detoxify, purify. Inhale. Tai Chi ball here. Now breathe into it. Breathe into the Tai Chi ball. The center of the Tai Chi ball with focus and sincerity, concentration, purity. Soften your physical body from the bottom of your foot, start coming up to the ankles, making sure everything is soft. Every muscle, every joint, take your time. Sincere effort, pure thought, pure intention. Take your time, no rush. Nobody's waiting for you. You have nowhere to go.
Keep traveling all the way up. Pass through the hips. Come through the pelvis. Coming up, ascending from bottom to top. Open every joint. Take your time and work your spine, work your vertebrae. Start at the bottom in the lumbar, the lower lumbar, the base of your spine. Feel each and every joint. Feel them, they're there. Work from one to the other, all the way up. Lumbar, thoracic. All 12 of the thoracic vertebrae, go through each one, one by one, one by one. All five of the cervical vertebrae, one by one. Chin is slightly in. All five of the cervical vertebrae, walk through each and every one, travel inside of your body. All the way up to the tip of your crown point at the top of your head. Extend it from the sky above. Breathing from three inches below the belly. Breathing from deep below the soles of your feet. Imagine the earth energy is coming up. From the soles of your feet, the earth energy is rising through your entire torso, following the pathway that you already created. You have opened the gates and the chi is flowing. Chi is flowing from the bottom of your feet. Bubbling wells have become bubbling springs as the energy travels. The path that you already opened, you already created it. The, the tongue is placed at the roof of the mouth. Connecting the Dew and Ren Meridian. As you breathe out, the breath travels down the front of your body. Back down to Dantian and back to Mother Earth. Let go of any physical, mental, any, any stressors that may have come your way or to have been accumulated over time. Any pain, any aches, any worries, any sorrows. Let go. Let your Tai Chi ball begin to grow. As your arms begin to rise, hugging a tree. Follow me. Inhale. Exhale in and out of the nose. The eyes can be opened slightly or closed. Relax your shoulders. Open the lung meridian. Open the lung meridian. Do it with your mind. Breathe all the way through. Take your time. Feel the centers of your palms, the laogongs. As we begin to use our laogongs to scan our body, to scan our lung meridian from the tip of the hand all the way down, follow me now, don't touch. Inhale, trace and feel, feel the lung meridian beneath your right hand as you trace with sincerity, listening and feeling, sincere effort, 
sincere thought, tracing the long meridian. Pay attention to anything that you may feel. No rush. As we begin to heal, all the way up. Remember where it begins and ends. Breathe in and out again. Come all the way up and all the way down one time. Clearing the lung channel. All the way up, all the way down, as we begin to clear the lung channel. All the way out, all the way out, tips of the fingers, out into the infinite. Let that go. Let that go. Whatever it may be. Don't investigate, just let that go. Inhale, exhale. As we begin to trace and scan the other hand, take your time and scan the entire lung meridian of the right hand. Sincere, focus, thought, intention, whatever it may be, don't try to interpret anything, just feel, open the Lao Gong points in the palm of the hands, breathe naturally Feel the bottom of your feet. Breathe naturally. We're letting go, clearing the lung channel. Don't rush. Just feel. Scan, listen, listen with your hands. Listen with your ears. The eyes are not open, slightly open or slightly closed. All the way out, all the way out, out the tips of the fingers. Let that go. Don't try to interpret it. It's no longer important to you. Let that go. Open the shoulders. The meridians are open now. The meridians are open now. If your arms get tired, don't struggle through it. Just put your arms down on the side and come back whenever you're ready to get back into it. We want to brush the arm this is an energetic brushing, no touching. Three times on both sides. Inhale, it's brushing. Tonifying and strengthening the lung meridian. Follow me as I go up, but not down. Three times, tonifying. The long meridian. Don't try to interpret it. If you begin to shake, tone that down. Energy is escaping. Tone that down. Three times, up and down the long meridian. 
tonifying and strengthening. Up, but not down. Don't interpret it. Take your time. Fear was there. Brushing three times. Up, but not down. Change size now. If you begin to shake, tone that down. Breathe into it. Take your time and brush. Strengthening and tonifying the long channel. Preparing for sore fingers. Preparing for sore fingers. Feel. Don't touch. Brush up three times. Long meridian. Feel your body. Are you relaxed? Let the chi flow. Allow it to happen. Allow it to happen. You can't make it happen. Allow it to be. Sore fingers. Both sides, same time. Activate sore fingers. Lung channels are open now. Hmm? That's the gesture. Lung channels are open. Let them stay open. Let them stay open. I have to turn sideways here because we have to extend our arms. You can't see both hands right now. Let me see. Ah. 
So both arms are extended as such. All right? Keep the channels open. Cheese flowing. Keep the channels open. A little more narrative. I'm gonna inhale, follow me. Inhale, shoulders open. Pull the shoulders up towards your ears. Inhale, look up towards the sky. Look behind yourself. Holding your breath. This is an exhale. Shoulders are coming down. The hands are beginning to open. You're going to do three like that. You're going to inhale. This is the breath that goes along with the movement. Inhale. Through the nose. Don't do it yet. This is the narrative. Exhale. Out of the mouth this time. You're going to make a healing sound for the lungs. It goes... Okay, we're gonna do three of those. Go ahead and make your sore fingers. Lung channels are open now. Inhale, look up, lift up the shoulders. Look up, look behind yourself. Hold your breath. Make the sound, look forward. One more. Sword fingers. Extend through the swords. Open the lung channels. Elongate. Relax the body. Feel your swords. Inhale. Pull both shoulders up towards the ears. Roll the head back. Look up towards the sky. Look behind yourself. Let your head just hang there. Hold your breath. Exhale. Bring the arms down slowly, slowly, slowly. Cross the hands in front of yourself. The left hand is in front of the right hand. Inhale. Cross hands here. Exhale. Hands open, arms unfold. One, we'll do three like that. Open the lung meridian when you get here, you see? Open. Go down, tips of the fingers are in the ground. Earth energy is in your palms, cross hands, left over right. Form an X. Split opening left and right. You can make this as big as you want. Roll the shoulders forward here as the palms come down. Open the, open the, open the meridian, then flatten the hands out, see? Now, getting the earth energy here, I'm scooping up hands up, hands full of it, hands full. Hands left over right, lifting, floating up. Separate, make this as big as you like. Burst, travel out into the whole universe, the whole galaxy. Let all that energy just go. Let's do it again. Let's let all that energy fly out there. So here, use your imagination, scooping up all the earth energy. Fingertips are like the tips of a bulldozer digging into the dirt. Scooping, left over right. It's real heavy now, pick it up with your legs. Crown point leading. Separate all the way out. Travel into galaxies, many galaxies. Remember, let the energy go. You can't see it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. Let it go, follow it. Good. Rotate your shoulders three times. Left side, back. One. Two. And three, changing sides. Inhale on the way up, right side, back one. Exhale, fingertips point through the ground, through the earth. Use your imagination, two. Remember, fingertips pointing through the ground. Deep as you wanna go, you can only create the limitations. Inhale, pull that back up. Whatever was down there, bring it back up. Use your imaginations, that's three. 
left side, one. All the way through the earth. The more we can play with our Tai Chi, you'll see how your body starts to react in profound ways. We gotta go back to being kids again. One, we gotta go back to being kids again. Pick it up, up to the ear. There you go, two, let's do one more. Exhale. Inhale on the way up, crown point leads up. Tip of the crown point leads up. Tailbone takes me down. Right side, one. Inhale. And exhale on the way down. Inhale. And exhale on the way down. That's three. Both hands go forward. Roll back. One. Inhale. Open the shoulders. Same meridian line. Same meridian line that we talked about. Two. Inhale. We're back to nose breathing again. Yeah, back to nostril breathing again. Because there's no sounds being made. So the tip of the tongue is back at the roof of the mouth still. Lips are slightly sealed. Face is relaxed. Nice, relaxed face. You can smile if you wish. No tense face. Good, that was enough. Hey, cross hands. Right over left. Right over left this time. Separate, exhale down. Ball bounces up, follow the ball. Out and in, inhale. Exhale on the way down. Inhale. Exhale on the way down. We talked about lung meridian, right? All you see all these movements? Look, lung meridian. All right. Extend out to infinity here, right? Out the whole meridian. Now you know how to extend through that meridian, right? To let go. Remember the junk we were letting go today? Right. You can bring that into this. The same idea, let it go. That same garbage, same junk. Connect the meridian lines. Follow me, family. I'm going to change. Inhale. Long and short hand. Up to the front left hand corner and back. Crown point up, tailbone down. Long and short hand. Meridians. Up the front corner. Diagonal. Find the corner of your room and trace that line. Make it really 45 degrees. And then find a corner and sit in the, in the corner and follow where the corner and the ceiling unite, where they connect and become one. And trace that line. Make it real. Make the angles and the geometry perfect down the corner. When you make the geometry perfect, it takes you a lot less time of getting things right. Because in this practice, it's very specific. You can be off by an eighth of, an eighth of an inch, and imagine after being off an eighth of an inch over X amount of years, you're gonna be far off the target, wouldn't you agree? You're gonna be far off the target. We start off and we wanna bring it back in. We start off target, something like a rocket. When a rocket leaves here to launch off, it's not on target. It's not directly aligned with where it's going. You see how I changed up, family? <laughs> I changed directions on you. Watch this. Down, around, back to this other corner, and up. I changed it. I bet Gary noticed that. Down, around, watch this. You saw that? Instead of going up, I came back around. Down, around, back around. Back 
back up to the front left corner across the front down the corner up the left front corner across the front down the front right corner around to the back over to the other side on the back see how you can just flow when you start learning all these angles you see it huh feel the bottom of your feet see the whole body's helping here not just the arms whole body focus on the center point focus on moving from there imagine moving from there imagine that there's a small little you <laughs> Yeah, this will help actually. Keep flowing, family, whatever flow you have. But imagine this, this, this is gonna help you profoundly. So here you are, this is your center, right? In your mind, put your body in that center and move that little body that's in the center, move that. And that will move this. But it will move it in a very precise way because you're moving from a small space instead of from a big space. So think about that. It's coming from a much smaller origin point, more precision, right? The closer we are to center, the more precise. The farther we get away, things start getting a little shaky. Wouldn't you agree? How's everybody doing, fam? How's everybody doing? Getting your 45 degree perfect. Oh, I didn't see Master Lee out in a while. I need to stop in. So there you go. I was just telling you how, don't I talk about how important the 45 is, Gary? How'd everybody hang out with the flow? Let's do a little something else. We got a few more minutes. Uh, that's, that's a big one to hear. Ms. Horton, just to spend my first time standing. It only gets better as we go. It only gets better as we go. I don't know how long we stood for. How did y'all like the standing? That was a nice little standing session. Yes, everybody's loving it. Everybody's loving it. Everybody's loving it. This is a good flow today. That's the hurricane flow. This is the hurricane flow. Woo, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, let's do, I wanted to do one more thing I had in mind. I want to do one more thing I had in mind. Let's do that. Let's do, um, Follow me through this family. We'll play around with it. Brush knee twist step. It's Tai Chi walking. It's Tai Chi walking, but you know how I am with the details. So the moment that your body gets here, it should already be in motion, but not by you physically making it happen. It should just be a slight drifting. I mean, your body should never be stagnant. It should be just from the breath alone, the body goes in motion. You should start feeling that on the bottom of your feet because we're bringing so much focus to the bottom of our feet and to different parts of our body. That's how we build up the, the, um, the sensitivity. And then once we build up the sensitivity, we can feel it, we can move it. When we can feel it, we can move it, we can control it more. That's how Tai Chi becomes so nice and beautiful and so. And relax because we're finding all these spots on our body from sensitivity training that we lost connection with and we aren't able to move as efficiently anymore but now we're going backwards man this stuff is simply amazing I'm sorry it gets me excited here float over to the left float over to the left you can have the hands in front of Dante Twist, little step, take out Tai Chi ball left side, take it out and place it upon the earth's surface. Yeah, with your imagination, place it there. 
That brings mindfulness. You see I stepped up with that back foot? You see that? Look at my torso. It's so stable, right? Because I have my weight here that my torso doesn't move. Did you notice that? Right, see? That's called walking like a cat. Now I want you to, this other hand starts to go up. This one's coming across the bottom, brushing the knee. See that? Now follow me back. Watch my back foot. Start remembering this because you're going to do this a couple times. Step back. This comes over, brush the face. This steps forward. Brush the bottom leg. This hand comes up. Watch my back foot again. Every time we go back, we must turn that first, like that. Straighten it out. Step back. You see that? Back to parallel stance. Turn the back foot. Come up, brush, go up. Shift forward. I'm gonna do two steps from here. Watch this. As I shift back, watch my front foot this time. Because I'm coming forward, I do this whenever I'm going forward. I turn that foot out. See that? Very specific to going forward. Advancing step. And then I can bring this foot forward very easily. Foot is straight ahead. This one comes down. This is brush knee. This one comes up. Just like we were doing, but we took a step. We'll do a couple more steps, and we'll do some of this tomorrow as well. I want to start doing this. Shift back. See that? This is the walking we were practicing. 45 degrees. Come across my face, down. My body is still vertically. I'm not leaning forward as I walk. Tailbone is down, crown point is up. Walking like a cat, see? Heel touches the ground first. But my weight is not on this leg yet. My weight's still here. My weight begins to come here. See this? This hand going up, coming here. Upward and downward energy. Shifting forward. Now my weight is being transferred from rear leg to front leg. Same time. One more step. One more step and we'll bow out. Going backwards. Shifting to my rear leg. Front leg, front foot, turning out to a 45 degree angle. Notice that word 45 keeps coming up over and over and over again. It's very important to know the geometry. It will help you with the precision in your movement. The geometry. Start with basic geometry, 45 degrees. Trust me, we're not doing any of those theories or anything. That's the last step. That's Tai Chi walking, and we're doing a uh, brush knee. We'll add more to it later, and then you'll be flowing with it. See our coil right there? Coil. That's the waterfall action. Coil coil, coil, whole body coils, coil, watch this hand here, coil, this one, coil as I move forward, so this was my back leg, it's coiling as well, 
Everything has got that coil motion. Let's brush knee twist step. Okay, let's bow out, family. We did a we did quite a bit today. <laughs> Seemed like we slowed town that time down today. That was good. We slowed time down. Let's come back in. So we moved around a little bit after our meditative work. That was awesome, by the way. The sword fingers. So doing that type of work will build internal internal power, internal energy is moving because we're opening the meridian system. Here, let's bow out. Thank you. It's about the chi flow. You know, when there's blockage, energy doesn't move. It makes sense. It's so simple. It's so simple. But I didn't know in the beginning either. I had no clue. Just was brought up a different way, you know. They say sometime, not sometime, but we should. Thank you, Sifu. Not just sometime, but we should question our very own uh, traditions. Virtual hug, family. Yeah, question everything that we were taught, you know what I mean? And it makes sense. The more I question, the more I find out. And just because something is working doesn't mean that it's the best way that things could be done. So why wouldn't you question everything? Yeah, and that, that's what one of the things that really, really, really made me fall in love with Sifu. Unlike a lot of people, he told me to question everything. And he said, including myself. Don't believe anything that I tell you or anyone else. I'm like, wow, what in the heck is he talking about? A teacher is not going to tell you, don't believe what he's, what he's telling you. But what he was saying was basically do your own investigation. Do your own investigation. That's the only way of truly knowing anyway. Other than that, we just have an intellectual understanding. And intellectual understanding to me is not true knowing. Knowing takes experience. You have to actually live that, that you have to live that <laughs> to know anything other than some information. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm not like uh, Sifu said, he used to make jokes with one of my uh, sisters before. He would always say, Yeah, Jennifer knows a lot of things. But if you want to know about Tai Chi, talk to me. And I would be like, you know, he would make fun of her. She was one of his best students, but and she was she was a very knowledgeable person in several different fields. And basically, Sifu was like, I don't know nothing about anything, but we can we can you know this Tai Chi thing, we can do that. Yeah, he he was he was a sweetheart. Rest in peace to Sifu. <laughs> hey, family. Today was wonderful. You all got some sword fingers. And the soul group seen sword fingers before. Hopefully you got something new to add to your sword fingers today. And just training it together, to me, is always an honor. And as I said before, we know that it helps the lung meridian. And I still have one more detail to add that I didn't add today. I'll add it tomorrow. We'll do it again tomorrow. But uh, the sword fingers are, are tonifying. First, we, we uh, clear the channel, right? We did that with the meditation and the scanning. We did that. And you see how that works. And then we moved into the tonifying with the breath. You get what I'm saying? Now, there's one more thing that I didn't mention, and I'll mention it tomorrow. You know, uh, the last breath. I usually do maybe about six, three to six of those exercises every day. No more than that. There's really no need. Um, but the last one, if it's number three or number six, there's a, cl a closing or ceiling. And I didn't show that today because I, I didn't want to take too much more time. But I'll do that tomorrow. That's, that's part of the tonifying. And some of you know it already, where you actually have the... Um, Tighten up on the, um, the anal sphincter, that area, on the last breath, and kind of goes <laughs> Yeah, but you got to tighten up on the anal sphincter. You can't have it loose. 
So that's very important when you make that, that sound like that because you're creating an internal vacuum with that, with that, that last breath. And you want to move all the oxygen out of your body. But anyway, those of you who stuck around, now you know how to do it, right? On number three or number six, as you exhale, So you see it takes a little effort, right? But at the same time, you, you should be pulling up on the perineum, the uh, anal sphincter area. That should be coming up and not going out. So it takes a little practice and the more you do it, the better it gets and the more you build that internal, that internal uh, strength. We're tonifying our organs, man, it's amazing. Anyway, family, I love you all. I'm gonna sit around and drink some tea. I love this tea that I got today. So I'm gonna sit around and do that. You guys be safe. Share this, uh, this lung exercise with your friends because who, who can't benefit from having um, stronger lungs? You know anybody? You know anybody who can't benefit? Please tell me, tell me one person that can't benefit right now that you know of from having stronger uh, lungs. Yeah, just let them know that this, this is good for your lungs. And either they like it or they don't. Hopefully they like it because it definitely helped heal my lungs. I didn't even tell the story. That's why I don't get into it too much. Just heal me. That's what, I'm, that's what I mean when I say knowing. I know this. I didn't read it in a book. I'm a disabled veteran. My lungs were smoked, chemically exposed. I nearly died more than once because of my lung problems. I know this. I've been on the brink of death because of my lungs. I know this works. It strengthens and tonifies. It, oh. Mm-hmm. Give thanks to Sifu for this one. Give thanks to Sifu for this one. Hey, Soul Group, thank you all for sharing and continuing to share. The views are just unbelievable. And, and it's not even that. It's not even that. Although, I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I want more people to see it. I'm happy for those who are. But it is the people who are seeing it all the right people <laughs> all all the right people wonderful wonderful connections soul group connections i mean real soul group connections just just what i always dreamed of you know the, the tai chi 360 remember remember i said creating a real com community a real resource center where we can all uplift each other help each other along the way live harmoniously the way that we should be. Yeah. It's possible. It's possible even in these current days and times. We create our own way. We don't go, we don't have to do what's going on and we can do a lot better. The whole tribe thrives because we all are unique in a very special way. We all bring our resources together, no matter what it is. If you fix cars, I should be coming to you to get my car fixed. That's how people do it. If you know about healthy lifestyle, I should be coming to you to learn, learn about my um, dietary needs, proper nutrition. We should be our own resource center. You start, you start close, you start with yourself, then you start with, with what's close to you and you keep going out from in. It's from inside to outside. That's real business. You can't do this kind of business when you're putting money first. It comes out of love. A whole nother, it's a whole nother way of doing business. And then you get more quality service. You get the best quality service. Because you're not doing it for money anymore. You get what I'm saying? You're doing it for the dream and hope of humanity. 
That's what it is, Vivian. You're doing it for the dream and hope of humanity. I love what we're doing, Soul Group, and I need to know what more of you are doing. I need to know what more of you are doing so we can see how more of us in the community can benefit from each other. We got too much powerful energy in this room. Way too much not to be, be being resourceful and, 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 and really relying upon each other, uplifting each other, taking each other. I mean, being each other's biggest cheerleaders, wanting to see the other ones succeed just as much as I want to see myself succeed. That's the way it has to be. That's the only kind of people I'm surrounding myself with. People who want to see me succeed just as, sum up, just as much as they want to see themselves succeed. Other than that, I don't have time. I don't have time. Because that's how I am. I want to see you succeed. And I'm going to do all I can to see you succeed. And you, and you better believe that. You better believe that. That's, this is the age of the Aquarius, whether you believe in astrology or not. It is what it is. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's cliche, but it's truth. I'm, I'm, I'm living it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. And, and the universe giving me so many clues. It's crazy how I've been seeing, um, you know, synchronicity and numbers, you know, the one, one, ones. And me and uh, Megan was just talking about it. The video from the other day came out to be exactly one hour, 11 minutes and 11 seconds. You know how often I'm seeing that number sequence? Do you have any idea? Sometimes I see it multiple times in one day. It's odd if I don't see it every day. And this has been going on for a long time. So to me, that's the universe talking to me, telling me what's going on. This is new beginnings. That's what the number one stands for. The new beginnings and the universe speaks to us in symbols and numbers. But if you're not paying attention to it, you'll keep missing all the information that's being given to you. So you get confirmation. There you go, 1, 11, 11. One hour, 11 minutes, 11 seconds. I picked up on that the other day, Megan. I'm like, wow, there's another confirmation. Right, Megan? Yesterday's video, go look at it. Look at how long it was, it's gonna blow your mind. If that's not confirmation, if that's not confirmation, you tell me what it is, because I'm listening to the universe. I get it all the time. I remember one day I was walking out the door, a thought came to my mind, and, and I, I posted a picture. As soon as it happened, I walked out the door, a thought came to my mind, and a bird shit right on my sore finger. A piece of bird shit landed right on my sore finger. Now, if that ain't confirmation from the universe, you tell me what is. You tell me what is, family. Right on my sore fingers? My sore fingers out of everybody else's sore fingers? As I just completed a, a very positive thought? The universe speaks to us in all various types of ways. Exactly, Aquarian age, almost daily, I glance at time. It's Exactly, I do it at least once a day. It's like I'm in sync. It makes so much sense. Family, I'm loving, I'm loving, I'm loving, um, I call it a journey, this journey that we're on together. And I, I'm so happy for whoever encouraged me to actually start doing this, because I'll be honest with you. When I first started doing it, I was a little nervous and stuff like that. I'm a little shy, to be honest with you. I'm a little shy. And I, I mean, I teach a lot of people, <laughs> but it's weird. Yeah, I'm really kind of like a loner type, but when I teach, I come out of my shell. Yeah, bird poop on me, man, as soon as I walk out of the door. Yeah, Deanna. As soon as I walk out of the door, bird dropping is a good look. So, exactly, I know that, fam. Yeah, but like I was saying, when I first began doing these live streams, I was a little shy. Because I didn't really know who I'm dealing with. You're dealing with thousands of people all over the world. But I'm glad that I was encouraged to keep doing it because now it's like, it's amazing, man. It's transformative. It, it just, I feel like it, I love doing it now. It's like I, I can't wait to do it. It's a beautiful thing because I know I, I'm with the right people who actually, you know, taking the training 
seriously and, and it has it's, it's it's it has purpose to you you know what i mean to improve yourself and stuff like that so it makes a big difference man when the soul group is present and really knowing the true benefits of the practice how profound it is i'm so happy that's all i can say i'm glad you thank you you did thank you i'm glad you did thank you yeah i'm just super happy Hey, this is a great group that we have going here. I'm so happy you and appreciate it. Yeah, I keep you. Make sure y'all getting y'all 20 minutes in per day, at least. Out of all the stuff I've been giving you, just something 20 minutes per day. Trust me. All right. I mean, it doesn't matter. You you choose some. It can be just playing with the Tai Chi ball, turning left and right side. It can be up and down. We'll go look at one of these videos every day. Get you 20 minutes of practicing every day and you're going to start reaping more benefits. That's what I want to see you doing. That's what I want to see you doing. See for around hope we meet one day. Hey, well, we still got to do that, Deanna. Now, Deanna's um, a part of the Tai Chi family. Uh, from my Sifu Ron, actually, she learned from Ron a little bit, and she and I never met. And she's been coming to the, the meetups here, we met online. Yeah, Deanna, we gotta meet one day. Yeah, this is good practice. It, help, it helps transform mind, body, and spirit. Amazing, just what Master talks about. Just what Master talks about. And a lot of people just don't see that. Especially, I'll say this, a lot of people who, um, a lot of martial artists, I'll just say that straight out, a lot of them don't get it. Because they're looking at it for fighting alone. But they don't understand that everything that you learn can be put towards fighting or ice skating or whatever it is it's about transforming yourself to a higher level you get what i'm saying and master liao simply explains that he says you know mar most martial artists have this he this is the way he break it down he says they have this concept of becoming bigger faster and stronger most martial artists he says but tai chi the way that we learn it it's not about becoming bigger faster and small um, i mean big, i can't even say it because <laughs> Because it, to me, it makes no sense. But uh, becoming bigger, faster, and stronger. He says it's not about that. He says, basically, they're, they're taking a bunny rabbit and turning the bunny rabbit into a bigger bunny rabbit. He says, no matter what, you're still a bunny rabbit. You know, a bunny rabbit is known for having very yin nature. I'm not saying they won't protect themselves, because I have seen them actually defend themselves. But he was just saying they're cute and cuddly and not really known as being predators, not a bunny rabbit. But he's saying that Tai Chi turns us from being into bunny rabbits into being a cat. So they often talk about the cat. You know, tiger is a cat. Tiger, snake, and crane is what our system is um, modeled after. Tiger is uh, first, first, uh, the first section of the form, first section of the long form, Snake is second section of the long form, and then third is a crane. The three animals form the dragon. Tiger, snake, and crane form the dragon. A lot of people don't know that, that the dragon has the attributes of the tiger, the snake, and the crane. You get what I'm saying? So today we did the lungs, right? The lungs are associated with the crane. The lungs are associated with the crane. Lifting up the shoulders above the clavicle, right? Above the clavicle is the upper dantian. So this stuff, it, it just, it goes on and on and on and on. We go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. But, uh, yeah, thank you all. That was good. If you have any questions in, in regards to today's lesson or today's gathering, don't hesitate to drop something in the chat. If you want, want me to share anything in particular, 
um, hit me up with a private message or drop it in the chat. Basically, I would say hit me with a private message to make sure that I get it. And then I'll do my best to incorporate it into, into the lesson. I like doing that. It's pretty cool. I find myself doing the moves when I'm out, when I'm out, LOL. That's good. Yeah, I, was, I used to do them, man. I'd be in the grocery store, wherever I can do them, I do them. You don't have to do that, but yeah, people look at you a little strange. Um, yeah, Jim, we are absolutely just that. A lot of people don't understand that. I can go deep down the rabbit hole with that one, too. I am you and you are me, my darling. Yes, I can go deep down the rabbit hole with that. Reflections, that's it. Simply straight up reflections. Hey, I'm gonna get out of here, family. I'm gonna have some tea, I made me some water. My father was born in the year of the dragon, uh, uh, a snake. Well, you know the snake is my, is my favorite uh, posture. You know that snake creeps down posture. I love that. And um, actually, that's kind of like what I model my whole Tai Chi after, the snake. Simply because, what did I tell you? What did I tell you about my lungs? My lungs were ruined from chemical exposure. Ruined. So I had to heal my, my lungs. So how do you think I healed my lungs? I.e. I became a snake. I had to become the snake. I had to tonify, I had to clear and tonify my lungs. My lungs were, were constantly filled up with mucus. I was on the verge of death more than once. I mean, literally down to my last breath. And you know what? I learned to stay with my last breath and that's what saved my life. I stayed with my last breath all the way to the end because I didn't get afraid. I felt myself wanting to get fearful because I thought I was dying. And I said, go back to the principles, man. Stay relaxed. Follow the breath all the way out, my brother. Follow the breath all the way out. This is probably your last one. And I got to a point where we enter a phase, and I'll explain it to you all one way. It's funny how we got here as well. Yeah, I became the snake to clear the lungs. And I had, I, I, when I was a young kid, I would actually collect snakes. I have pictures of myself with snakes on, online. So I've always liked snakes. But I always say that uh, people talk about the snake being evil and all that stuff, but they don't understand the story behind the snake. They've been bamboozled about the snake. The snake is no different from that Tai Chi sign on the wall, you know. I built relationship with snakes. Snakes are not bad. Snakes are snakes. Just like monkeys are monkeys. <laughs> snakes are snakes. That's a snake right there. Yeah, so I use snake creeps down. Um, it happens to be the most physically demanding um, posture in the Tai Chi practice. Sifu, RIP to my Sifu, Sifu Ron. He prescribed to me snake creeps down. And I would have to do snake creep down for hours in drills, line drills. And I would be tired. I would be drop dead tired. I'm talking two or three hours with just snake creeps down. But remember, this was also uh, medicinal for me as well. This was, this was therapy. This was, this was saving my life. And um, I would do hours of drills. And it was tough, it was physically demanding, it was mentally demanding. I wanted to give up, but I wanted to live as well. So I would keep going, snake creeps down, at the snake creeps down. I wouldn't stop. I would go to the point where my legs were just uh, barely able to stand. And um, I got sick a couple of times through that, but getting sick made me get, become well. And that's what Sifu was doing. He was taking me to the point where I would get sick. And he took me there. And um, I've never been sick again since. 
it's been years. Yeah, I'll show you one day. Actually, you, uh, wow, if you look at my Facebook pictures, it's probably the one that I have the most of. And most people probably, the one on the photo that you made for me. The one that you made on the photo for me. Megan, it's the one that you did on the photo for me, the Tai Chi 360. That's the one that, um, yeah, that's Snake Creep Town. I don't want you to do it without me giving you the, without me guiding you through it. I don't want you to do it without me guiding you through it. I don't want you to hurt your hurt yourself, hurt your knees. I want you to do it right. Especially with this one. Like I said, it's the most physically demanding posture that we do. And it, you can damage your knees. I see people messing it up. I see people messing it up. Yeah, pull the toxins out. The toxins went away, the mucus went away. Uh, my breath, I mean, even now, when I play around with guys like much younger than I am, and with uh, guys that train, like go running and stuff like that, I don't run, I walk. But um, they'll be out of breath. They'll be out of breath. And I'll be like, I ain't out of breath. I'm just getting started. So with that being said, there's studies to show how Tai Chi, the breathing method that we use, how it can oxygenate the body to such a high degree that is equivalent or beyond other aerobic type of movements, whether they're like running and stuff like that. We breathe more efficiently than they do. That's huge. So we can help athletes as well. We can help them become super athletes by incorporating the correct breathing. That's one of the things that I'm doing with the uh, MMA fighter that I'm training. The UFC guy, Marcus. I'm teaching him how to breathe more efficiently. Helping him as well. And how to, how to stay relaxed. Because when we're not relaxed, we burn, we burn more energy, right? So most people are not relaxed because they're out of balance. Remember I talk about balance being so important? If you're not structurally balanced, structurally erect, your body's off, you're using more muscles than you need to, there you go, you're burning more energy if you're using more muscles. So if your structure's not right, you're burning more energy, people. This stuff is so simple. So simple that it's profound. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> there you go, synchronicity again. Yeah, you went right to it. I was like, hmm, she got the correct picture. Boom. Let's do it. Yeah, wait for me on that. Maybe I'll go into it tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. A lot of times I like to go with, uh, I don't really like to think about what I'm going to do. I just like to go with the flow. No, I wouldn't do that. I would want to want you to show me. Thank you, Belinda, as you one needs to get. Yeah, don't do that. Exactly, especially if you already have a damaged knee. You know what, Deanna? My knee, that's another injury that I had. My knee. My knees are good to go now because my structure is correct. When your structure is correct and you do these, I'll, I'll, this is quotation marks. These are quotation marks, right? When you do these so-called extreme movements, if your structure is correct, is correct, I said correct. <laughs> I, just, I just created a word, correct. I put correct and right together. <laughs> but anyway, if your structure is correct, your joints, they don't take a toll. They don't get abused because the structure is correct. But you have to be relaxed because the muscles are tense that the structure cannot be proper, it can't be relaxed. The structure, the physical structure, it can't form, the right shape can't form. So first of all, we have to be relaxed to be balanced. Gotta be relaxed to be balanced. That's the one reason I say the first thing I do when I wake up, I hit my mat and do my, um, my, my meditation. 
get my mind right so I can be relaxed to be balanced. To be relaxed to be balanced all throughout the day. Intuitive practice, best way. So I would say bad knee. Yeah, well, even with a bad knee, unless it's been recommended or advised by your doctor that you can do some type of uh, low impact exercise, I don't see why Tai Chi can't help you because I know people who had uh, total knee replacements and they still do Tai Chi. Uh, one of my uh, old time friends, a karate buddy, he blew out both knees from karate. Oh man, he was a hell of a karate guy. But he tore up both of his knees along the way. So there you go. He had total knee replacement. R.I.P. to brother George. R.I.P. to my big brother. Um, yeah, two knees replaced, and he was still do. It's his Tai Chi. I mean, you know, the best of his ability. You know. So we can all start from some place, but get some get a recommendation from your uh, doctor. Exactly, you're right. There you go. Pam said, must be very careful when doing these postures with damaged knees. Need proper alignment and relaxation. So one thing we can do, even with these um, these uh, more extreme postures, like snake creeps down, all postures can be adjusted or should be adjusted according to our own uh, physical abilities. So what you don't want to do is force yourself into these deeper more extreme postures because the moment that we force ourselves we're already out of tai chi we're out of the state of tai chi tai chi is not about force or making anything happen tai chi is about allowing it to happen so if we force ourselves into any 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 relationship we'll get we'll get damaged or injured physical relationship relationship with people the risk of damage and injury is definitely there from force because we want to allow the joints to open naturally by relaxing the muscle. Remember I talked about establishing the Tai Chi body, the stick man body or the stick lady body. You know, I talk about establishing that first. Always talking about establishing that. Establishing the state of being song, song. Some people spell it S-U-N-G, some people spell it S-O-O-N-G, but it's just a term that, re that is uh, relating to a, a body state of being. It's relaxation, but it's more than relaxation. It's not being relaxed like a, a noodle, like, you know, just with no structure. We still want to be in contact with our physical structure being correctly aligned, but we want to allow our physical, the big muscles to relax to their most natural state. That's what we're working on. And then we begin to, man, our bodies begin to change. We begin to develop what we call the Tai Chi body. Pretty amazing. Hey, off topic, you have a paper, uh, a paper, uh, I got plenty of papaya trees. I got plenty of papaya trees. You got some ancient, you got some recipes for me? You got some secrets? You got some secrets? Any healing remedies or anything? Chen? Yeah, I got some papayas out here, man. They're doing pretty good. They're coming to the uh, end of their lifetime, though. You know, they don't live forever, these papaya trees. They have a very short lifespan. Some people say you can cut them and they'll grow back, you know, without cutting the whole tree down, but... I've had limited success with that, so I'm still working on that technique. But yeah, I got papaya trees here. Why'd you ask about that? <laughs> We're talking about being relaxed and you asked about a papaya tree. They look rather relaxed, that's for sure. They can definitely withstand some, some pretty tough winds, similar to the uh, palm tree, because of the way they're built. So we want to stand like a tree. Is that where you were going, Jen? Standing like a tree for standing meditation? The body and the legs are the trunk. The feet are the roots. 
the arms and the fingers and the hands or the limbs. And they're just relaxed, you know, they're, they don't need to be contracted to hold their position. That's what we call song. That's having Pong energy. Just standing there energized in our normal state without overdoing it. Pong or song as well. The naval people use it. Yeah, I know they do. I know they do. My neighbors use it here. They use the leaves as medicine. My neighbors use the leaves as medicine. They boil the leaves. Uh, supposedly it helps with, I think, diabetes or obesity or something. I don't know. I never used it. But they come by periodically and they ask for it. You can see them right here. Can you see them? I got those growing. I have two more here. They're kind of far up there. They're kind of far up there. You can see those. They come into the. They come into the. Uh, a lot of parts of their life, but they've been good. They've been good to me. Well, family, I'm gonna go take me a nap. And take me a nap. Yeah, lots of fruit, lots of fruit. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Got plenty of avocados this year. Plenty of, and the, pap the papaya's been really sweet. They've been amazingly sweet. I did, I did really good with those. We, we did really good. The thing is with them, it's funny when you plant the seeds, they don't show their sex until after they've been growing for a while. So you don't know if you're gonna get a, a, a male or a female. And the males, I hate to say it, but they're basically useless as far as uh, the seed, you know, they don't produce uh, fruit. The males don't. Only the females. So you have to have female plants growing. And oftentimes you get mostly f males. Male, 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 male. So that means no fruit. So you have to watch them and then you have to uh, uproot and get rid of the males. Which is the part that sucks. But they'll show you once they start flowering which one is a male, which one is a female. But up until the point where they start flowering, you really have no clue so which one's going to be what. Anyway, family, thank you all so much. That was wonderful. And we had our Tai Chi table talk after the lesson today. How cool was that? <laughs> that was pretty cool. That's You know what? Actually, that's the way we would normally do it with Sifu. We would do the Tai Chi table talk after the lesson. So it's funny how the Tao kind of led us there. The only reason I hadn't been doing it after the lesson is because I have the lesson like right after our, after our lesson. But yeah, doing it after, I like doing it after. Doing it before, I, you know, you, you might start thinking and I don't want you really thinking during the practice. I just want you enjoying the practice. So we kind of do both, but I ain't going to be, we, I'm not going to complain. I like what we got going on. I like what we got going on. Talk to you all later. Peace. Love you, family. Peace.